The status of AI in Africa is evolving rapidly. And although there is increasing interest and investment in AI technologies, there are challenges related to infrastructure, skills, and access to funding that hinder widespread adoption. AI is established on two main tiers, the foundational that runs on big data dominated by big tech, and the second tier from which developers build usable applications from harvested data. So where is Africa in this landscape, and how are we doing so far? We are not doing very well even on that second tier. Uh, part of the reason is, is because our researchers and developers you know, of AI, mostly based in the universities, in hubs, startups, and individuals. They are mostly youthful people. They lack the essential resources to create even that first, second tier AI. They lack compute. They lack networks that share data and also share the, the solutions themselves. But one thing where I know they suffer a lot and we must fix, and it goes beyond just the money, is the ability to collect quality data. Which points to our institutions of learning. So how is the continent responding to the effective use of AI in learning institutions? Executive Director of Usawa Agenda, an organization that promotes education justice, responds. I think that until now we we have adopted AI mostly as a buzzword. Uh, we have adopted it in word. We have not adopted it in deed. Uh, because I think that there is so much potential for AI, but it requires a comprehensive approach uh, to start by asking, do we want to teach AI or do we want to use AI to teach? 16 out of 54 African countries have launched a national AI strategy. Over 30 countries remain at the early or inactive stage with no clear roadmap. According to Intel poll, most African countries are just starting their journey with artificial intelligence. We need it to be systemized, we need it to be uh, progressive, and we need it to be strategic. So, so that we are clear in our mind that in five, ten years, we want to have moved AI adoption from using AI to teach to probably teaching AI and then to developing AI. And if these developed tools are to have impact, it requires multiple disciplines from various sectors. So you need a complete team. You, the developer, you need a sociologist who knows how to engage with communities. You need probably a vernacular speaking and a local person who knows some of the words, you know, you know, who knows some of the lanes that you keep off and how to deduce facts from locals. You need to have a statistician. The collective effort strengthens the data and ensures its usefulness. And the AI tools developed can then help to solve Africa's big challenges. AI has potential to help us deal with this other crisis. Uh, it has potential to help boost agricultural production. It has potential to help us focus and for plan for disasters uh, that are holding us back. So it has potential to help us address the greatest threat uh, of youth unemployment. Beryl Oro, CGTN. So then, so far we've focused on the micro, let's focus on the macro, the big picture as it were. Exploring the policy choices and loopholes in various African markets as far as regulations and the use of large language models or AI, if you prefer, are concerned. Fola Adeleke is the executive director and co-founder of the Global Center on AI Governance is joining us now live on the program. Uh, thank you for your time this evening. I want to start with, you know, very briefly, from where you stand, what's the state of AI governance across the continent right now? Good evening and thank you for having me on this show. So, several African countries are already adopting AI strategies. At the last count, about 16 countries have adopted AI strategies, and these strategies are often the precursor to the adoption of broader AI governance frameworks um, in different countries. 
But beyond that, Africa has done particularly well in the adoption of personal data protection laws. There are more than 40 countries with data protection laws on the continent, and these data protection laws protect data subject rights, which come into play when it comes to AI and the protection of Africans from the potential risks and harms that um, these large language models sometimes present. We are seeing data protection authorities on the continent enforce their mandates in terms of fining tech firms in how they use personal data for behavioral advertising or in the use of biometrics with that adequate safeguards in place. So overall, we are seeing this trend where African countries recognize the, the need to, to protect Africans from, from the harms right. in, in processing for AI and, you know, data protection does help with that. A lot more companies, though, are starting to explore uh, or deploying even at scale, uh, using LLMs into multiple aspects of the work routine. So looking at it from the perspective of the consumer, how should we compel companies to be very clear, very transparent and fair about their decision-making processes when they're using LLMs in the workplace? Like, for example, if they're assessing job candidates or if they're deciding whether or not to pay an insurance claim and so on. Right, so a little known provision in most data protection laws, for example, is the right not to be subject to automated decision-making. And you will find this in most data protection laws in Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria. And this particular provision essentially requires companies, for example, to notify individuals when they are making decisions that would affect an individual entirely based on automated processes. And as individuals, we have the right to you know, lodge complaints with our data protection authorities in our respective countries when we believe that the decision that impacts us has been made through exclusively automated means without human intervention. So you can request for your data to be deleted, you can request for your data to be rectified, you can ask for your data to be restricted from a specific form of processing. So this specific data subject right not to be subject to automated decision making is something that is a, an important tool for, for citizens to, to prevent yourself from being um, targeted when right. with, with AI processing that has unfavorable outcomes for you. Uh, one last question for you. Uh, you and your colleagues at the Global Centre on AI Governance pointed out back in April um, that part of the problem with some of the AI strategies that we referred to at the start of the conversation, you essentially argue it's a bit like putting the cart before the horse because they're focusing on the deployment of LLMs into sectors that arguably could do with it, agriculture, healthcare, education, but we're ignoring at the same time the fundamental problems, access to reliable, affordable electricity, closing the digital divide, access to affordable broadband, and so on and so forth. Tell us more about that argument. That's an important point to raise. So given the fact that most African countries are increasingly adopting AI strategies, it's quite obvious why they are potentially doing this. I think one is, is because they are trying to follow the money since there's a lot of investment in, in AI now. But, but the problem is, you know, on the continent, we still have some basic infrastructure challenges. So if you take a country like Zambia, for example, which recently adopted a national AI strategy, this is a country where 6% of Zambian women are digitally literate. In terms of internet access, only 33% right, of Africans in, in, in Zambia um, have access to internet. The, the figure drops lower when it comes to rural access to the internet. And now, when you talk about trying to leapfrog development with AI, you, you still need to answer basic questions around access to electricity, internet connectivity, affordability of data, and most importantly, how do you promote digital literacy and public awareness? So it's quite important that while AI presents these fantastic opportunities for turbocharging development on the continent, some of these infrastructure concerns need to be addressed and most importantly, focusing on skills empowerment, skills development and public awareness about the risks and harms of AI and how people can protect themselves from some of these risks and harms while still leaning in to the opportunities that AI presents.